Teaching Area and Perimeter Concepts with Color Tiles Many students confuse area with perimeter, not knowing what these two terms mean. When they encounter straightforward geometry word problems, they may set up the problem with the wrong formula. And as a result, linear and square measurement have little meaning for students who may see units as merely words to append to a numerical answer. The activities you'll see on this video were designed to have students work with area and perimeter concretely in order to better understand the difference between area and perimeter and to better understand the concepts of linear and square measurement. These activities use square color tiles. Commercially available tiles are usually one inch square, which is ideal for measuring area and perimeter. Sets of color tiles often contain several different colors of tiles, but there's no significance to the colors. In these activities, students will use color tiles to make shapes and then count the tiles to get the measurements of the area and perimeter of each shape. They will see why we use linear measures for perimeter and square measures for area. Physically counting the number of tiles that cover a shape to measure the area and counting the tile sides around the outline of the shape to measure the perimeter is especially helpful for kinesthetic learners so they can develop a better understanding of the difference between area and perimeter. The basic unit for these activities is a one inch square tile. The area of one tile is one square inch. The area is measured in square units. The length of each side of the tile is one inch. The perimeter is the distance around the tile, as if an ant walked around the four sides of the tile. So the perimeter is four inches. The perimeter is a linear measure. One way to visualize the area and perimeter is to take some tiles and then make shapes using those tiles. For each shape, count the area, the number of square tiles in the shape and the perimeter, the number of tile edges that form the outline of the shape. I like to have my students make all possible shapes from a given number of tiles so they can see that the perimeter may change but the area remains constant. I'll show you what I mean in the next couple of slides. Let's use four tiles. We'll make all possible shapes that use four tiles. In class, I explain that in these shapes, each tile must touch another tile completely along one side and we must use all four tiles. Here are two shapes made from four tiles. They have the same area, four square inches, but their perimeters are different. And here's another way to make a shape from four tiles. This shape has area four square inches and its perimeter is 10 inches. I said I'd make all possible shapes from the four tiles and I've shown you three shapes. Are there others? I'll leave that to you to think about. For measuring area and perimeter, students estimate the area and perimeter of a given shape. Then they fill it with square tiles and count the area and perimeter. To cover this shape takes 19 tiles, so its area is 19 square inches. The perimeter measures 24 inches. Using color tiles gives students a fun way to explore area and perimeter and develop a visual image of these concepts. For this activity, I usually have my students work in small groups. Each group has five tiles and a piece of grid paper. Their task is to make all possible shapes for each number of tiles one through five. I usually demonstrate making shapes using three tiles since there are only two different shapes. As the students make shapes from the tiles, they draw them on their grid paper. Then they record the perimeter and area of each shape in a chart similar to the one shown here. I filled in the results we found earlier using four tiles. Are there any other perimeters possible for four tiles? When everyone is finished, I like to have each group share one of their four or five tile shapes with the rest of the class. Besides allowing me to make sure they're clear on the difference between area and perimeter, this can lead to a rich discussion about transformations of the same shape by rotations, flips, etc. I usually end this activity by asking each student to write one fact he or she learned from this activity about area and one fact about perimeter. This gives me valuable feedback about the benefit of this activity and an insight into the students' minds. 
I prefer that students do the measurement activity individually. I give each student about 20 tiles and a set of worksheets. Each page has a shape, a few of which are shown on this slide. For each shape, the task is to first estimate the area and perimeter, and then cover the shape with tiles and use the tiles to measure the area and perimeter. Students record their estimates and the actual measurements. When most students have finished, we have a class discussion. When do you use area and perimeter in everyday life? When are estimates useful? When are estimates sufficient? When is exact measurement necessary? Their answers to these questions give them more concrete images of the difference between area and perimeter. You can find square color tiles at teacher supply stores and catalogs. You can even use square mosaic tiles from your local home improvement store. It's also very easy to make squares from paper or cardstock. The National Library of Virtual Manipulatives Geometry Strand has a pattern block activity with square colored tiles and other shapes too. You can also make shapes on the NLVM's virtual geo board. This is the NLVM pattern block activity. You choose shapes from the palette on the left side. Here we're just using the square tiles to model our physical tiles. You can change the colors by clicking on the palette at the bottom. I've made three different shapes that use five tiles. Now we could find the area and perimeter of each of the shapes. This website can be used for a classroom demo if you have a computer and projector or for individual student practice. The web address is too long for you to try to copy it from this video. Just go to the NLVM website, choose the geometry strand, and then scroll down to pattern blocks. The NLVM's GeoBoard activity is a good way to practice estimating area and perimeter and then finding the measurements by counting. You stretch a virtual rubber band to make a shape. This shape has area 12 square units and perimeter 20 units. You can check your perimeter count by clicking on the measures button. To get to this activity, go to the NLVM website, choose the geometry strand, and then scroll to find GeoBoard. Here's the GeoBoard activity in action. We take a rubber band and then stretch it around the pegs to start making a shape. We pull out one side of the rubber band. We just have to make sure we make only vertical and horizontal lines, but we could still form an interesting shape. There now, how's this? We count squares and spaces to find the area is 32 square units and the perimeter is 30 units. We check the perimeter. Yes, it's 30. I sincerely hope you try using color tiles with your students. This is Marianne. Goodbye.